So the last remedy I've taken is a remedy called Morbillinum. It is a nozo prepared by, um, prepared from measles. <clears throat> and so I looked through all the different books I got to try to understand the depth of the remedy. And the way I found the remedy uh, for me was through muscle testing. So there's kind of a different path uh, than the traditional path that I used. And it's been giving me great results. It's really changing up my, um, just everything. It's a wonderful remedy for me. And, um, but I wasn't ready for it previously. It took me uh, probably a couple of years to get ready for this remedy. So my body can throw off whatever it needs to throw off from it. But, um, so I looked through all the books and I found not a lot of good information except by, uh, there's a book by M.L. Tyler called Homeopathic Drug Pictures. So I kind of got a little deeper into it and, um, I got, I found a really interesting passage. And this is really powerful. This is from uh, her ideas, and some of it's from her ideas, but uh, mostly it's from um, Hahnemann. So here we go. It's very powerful and really can give you good insight into what chronic disease is all about and miasms are all about. All chronic disease originate in a, and are based upon fixed chronic infections, which enable... Yeah, okay, we're good which enable their parasitical ramifications to spread through the human organism and to grow without end. Certain diseases such as smallpox, measles, true scarlet fever, the venereal disease, the itch of workers in the wool, canine rabies, whooping cough, are caused by a peculiar contagion of tolerable fixed, tolerable fixed character. These are so fixed in their course as to be always recognized. They can be named and we can endeavor to lay down some fixed method of treatment suitable as a rule for each of them. In all these diseases, he tells us, infection is instantaneous. And in all these, after infection, there is an incubation period of varying duration before the disease comes to the surface with fever, and eruption, or cutaneous manifestations capable of communicating the disease. <coughs> Excuse me. He asks, is there any parasitical or parasitic disease in the world which, when it has infected from without, does not first make the organism sick before its external signs manifest themselves? We can only answer no, there is none. We find that all infectious diseases which form local affections on the skin are internal diseases, the last result of which is the local cutaneous affection. Some of the above mentioned acute infections are, for him, chronic diseases. Uh, syphilis, gonorrhea, and sora, under which term he masses all non-venereal chronic diseases, epilepsy, asthma, melancholia, insanity, marsmerism, diabetes, consumption, cancer, and a long list of invertebrate, inverte, inveterate conditions of viscera and special senses of organ, organs of senses. One observes that chronic diseases for him, one diseases for him persist in varying forms and intensity so long as life lasts, unless cured by remedies homeopathic to the original disease. Whereas the others seemingly acute merely after running their course of about two to three weeks end in a crisis by means of which the fever, together with the eruption, are annihilated in the system, and the patient either dies of the disease or recovers. They have a peculiar nature of being extinct in the body. He reiterates, the chronic infections are semi-vital infections of the parasitical nature, which can only be neutralized and antidoted by more powerful remedy producing analogous effect. He shows that everything alike in acute and chronic follow precisely the same course, the only difference being in their outcome. And the end, it is only here that we would later experience part company with him in order to travel a stage further in his wake. Because we now know certain facts that some of the apparently acute diseases may not be annihilated, but only partially overcome, may become latent, modifying healthy reaction against sickness and injury, which there hen uh, henceforth are not normally recovered from. For instance, a man during his occupation experienced frequent or constant pressure on bone. If he suffers from some latent, once acute, now chronic infection, such as syphilis, he develops a sy syphilitic necrosis. Another in 
apparently perfect health, experienced a compound fracture. The bone refuses to unite and the wound to heal. Pus is examined and the organism of typhoid is find, found. He having had enteric 30 or 40 years previously. So what she's saying here is that a lot of the times the system does not overcome the acute infection and that it gets into some kind of a new relationship with that infection where the system kind of goes into this subacute kind of long-term chronic infective state that the body doesn't know really how to beat and and the disease or the condition let's say measles or whatever or tuberculosis it could be anything it basically evolves or adapts into a new form that can hide and basically do its deed okay so for example let's say someone has um let's say measles it goes into the system and takes on this new form that wouldn't be identified as measles but when there's stress on the system let's say you eat something you shouldn't eat or there's an injury or surgery or broken bone or whatever that mutated form or that adapted form goes and sits there and goes to the weakened area and damages it more you see infects it um, creates all sorts of havoc in this kind of weakened area so let's say you didn't have any problems but now you have a cell phone to your head and the infection goes into the different areas of the head maybe or it's in your pocket so it can go into a gland maybe a, a testy or a, um, you know your intestines or your appendix you see so that's really important to understand that these you know acute situations go into a latent state now the, the deeper story of a constitutional state needs to be understood that there has to be a ground for these infections to even come in and be able to grow in but most people do have some kind of an, some kind of a ground and so what could happen is let's say someone has a syphilitic uh, background okay that if that if they were to be exposed to syphilis that syphilis would grow immediately someone else may not have that kind of background so then when they get exposed to something like syphilis nothing happens to them they might carry it but they may not show any symptoms of it or they may not even carry it at all their body might just get rid of it but that um in <clears throat> but that in um some cases like like we said that this is this there's a syphilitic background that can accept syphilis and grow it really well that things other than syphilis but maybe in that same kind of family you know other kind of bacterium virus fungus and so forth um, can infect the system, not cause a syphilitic reaction. So if, let's say someone goes to, to the doctor, they don't have syphilis, but they're in that same group. And that same situation can happen where, it, you know, the pleomorphic theory kinds of, kind of deals with this, where there's different, you know, adaptations to different bacterium and fungus. And these prions or whatever they are, you know, they could be prions, but they could not be prions. So I think this lays out a whole new kind of dimension to uh, the miasmic theory that I've never really thought of in, in that it can go into these latent states and the body is constantly spending energy trying to fight this infection. That could have happened at childhood. It could have been measles. It could have been um, a whooping cough. It could have been, um, you know, what, chicken pox, whatever, you know. Um, I mean, you see chicken pox coming back in a lot of people with uh, shingles. So there is something to be said, you know, said to this about her theories and ideas, you know. So um, that said, you know, this is some new ideas about miasms that I've stumbled onto, and I think that um, we're we've made some really good ground in this area with the muscle testing and these new ideas.